What is up everybody? Today I want to do something slightly a little different. Um, today we're going to be actually diving into Red Deck. It's the deck that I think a lot of people who do play a lot of Magic of the Arena is if you don't play the deck, it's one of the decks you really just don't like to play against. I kind of want to show two different variations of like Red Decks that you may run into on uh, the Arena Ladder. Um, I mean, there's probably variations of like each one of these variations that I'm about to show you, but these are probably like two of the more common styles of the red deck. Uh, we'll break down each one of them, probably do a little gameplay for each one. But overall, we'll just kind of get like a sense of like why the deck is so, why these decks are so good, why they're so powerful, and why sometimes they can just be so frustrating. So uh, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to know why I post more videos like this when I go when they go live, hit that subscribe button. But let's move on to the video. All right, so we're gonna, I, these are the two decks. It's Red Deck 1 and Red Deck 2, I very, very generic names. Uh, each one is slightly different than the other. They're both Red Decks, Mono Red, you know, so on and so forth. That's pretty simple. But the way like their win conditions are different in each one in a, in a, in a, in a kind of different way, let's just go with. Uh, so let's go with Red Deck 1. Uh, pretty much this is like the standard Red Deck wins. It's a little, pro it's probably a little more pricey just because I think it plays with a couple more mythics than the other one does, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you play four of these bad boys for champions, haste for a strike, whatever attacks and control another knight gets plus one plus zero. You have a couple of these in your open in hand. Turn one, one damage. Turn two, you can then swing for four, so on and so forth. Scorch Bitter, it's a 1-1 one, one for 1. Whenever it attacks, it deals 1 damage automatically. And then if it's not blocked, it's another 1 damage. So it's a pretty decent uh, damage dealer without actually having to hit the face. Next up is Shock. You get rid of that early board presence. So if they have anything in your way, you can always Shock it, unless it has Hexproof. Robber the Rich, another solid card. If, it's a, if you're playing against a slower deck, they have more cards in your hand. You can slowly exile the top card of their library. Um, once you attacked with this, you may cast that spell as though you had the mana to play it. So you can kind of steal their cards and use them for your advantage. Next up is the Runaway Steam Kid. Every time you play a red spell, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. You may remove these red ca uh, these counters that you put on it to play a spell. So you can move three of them, get three mana, which is actually very, very good. And it's and with everything being very cheap, you can easily get the three counters on it pretty quickly. Uh, after that, we got the Annex pretty much, you know, if our guys die we get one one token creatures one uh, that we can use to attack it's a zero three every every its power is equal to the number of red devotion we have it's a mono red deck we all have a decent amount of devotion um but overall pretty solid card uh bone crusher giant another one of those two four spells two damage to target creature can't be prevented which is very good and then you can also play it for three and it's a four three and if it ever becomes target of a spell it deals two damage to that Spells controller, very, very solid card. Uh, then you got Lay Up to Stage. This is a great card here. This will give us more momentum if our hands starting to look a little light. You know, you tack up maybe the first couple turns, play a Lay Up to Stage, then you move on, you know, refill that hand up, have a couple more cards. Maybe you're looking for that one more land that you may need to play something, and boom, there you go. And the whole point is you're really not going to play for, for its full cost. You'll play for its spectacle cost, which is why this card's so solid. Phoenix of Ash at three cost, two, two flyer, flying haste. It gets plus two plus zero, so you can pump it if you have open mana. Also, you can escape it, so if it gets dumped into your graveyard, you can escape it for four and put a plus one plus one counter, so it becomes back even stronger. Uh, after that is Torbrand. This is kind of like the meat and potatoes of the deck. It's a legendary creature, so you can have more than one of them out, but it's a two, four for four, and pretty much everything we do damage with if it's a red source it deals that much damage plus two so it turns these like one one drops into like three damage sources and so on and so forth so the bigger things get it'll do more damage uh, and this is once you kind of play this this is kind of where you're in that part where you're kind of cleaning things up and hopefully you're going to do enough damage to finish off your opponent as well as there's also ember cleave ember cleave has flash you can spell, spend, send it anytime so if you attack in your opponent declares their blockers you see a guy they have open or something that maybe you want to kill in the process and then trample on over you play this Ember Cleave and attach it to that creature instantly. You don't have to pay the equip cost. And as well as it gets one less cost in cast for each creature you control that's attacking. So it's like I said, it starts off at a six cost, but you know, you attack by turn three or four and have like four creatures. This becomes literally a two cost spell. Very, very strong. Gives it whatever creature it equips plus one, plus one, double strike, trample. Very, very good. And then you got Castle Ember, uh, Embereth, you know, add plus one plus zero to your creature. So you may not draw the Ember Cleave, but you want to swing it for that extra point of damage across the board. Tap three, tap this land, 
and add plus one plus zero and 18 mountains it's not a very high demand in mana deck the highest thing we have is ember but it gets cheaper torrents then i guess in theory the highest costing card we have and it's not like we're trying to mix mana up so this is a pretty solid deck um it is annoying to be quite honest uh uh to play against but the cards are just synergize so well like you know it's like as long as you have like a very good hand even like having you know like having a hand with fervent champions and a runaway robber and a steamkin and all that stuff it's like you literally put your opponent in a position that they are on the defense of the whole time you get just so much damage in early as if you unless you run up against another deck that's kind of aggressive uh this deck pretty much will obliterate most control decks and or slower play decks that may not have early drops that physically sit on the board um they'll pretty much wipe out anything that's not like quick like this uh but let's move on to the next deck and then we'll get into some games in a second all right so the next deck is pretty much very very similar you're looking at the list and you're like oh this is literally the same deck well there's a couple different adjustments the way this one works is slightly different than the way the other one works so this one is pretty much you play uh you play pretty much a lot of one cost one ones um so you play your fervent champions you play my card called grim initiate first strike when it dies you mass one so you create a one one initially you may create a bigger if you have more grim initiates uh scorch bitter another one one which is in the other deck and we know it does uh this one plays tin street dodger as haste and then you can tap one to make it not be blockable except by creatures with defender which is great uh and then it plays this card called clavicade of calamity this you may have seen this card pretty much whenever you attack with a creature of power one or less it deals one damage to that player or planeswalker creature is attacking so pretty much all our one drops become even stronger because they automatically then deal one damage and that stacks for each attacking creature so everything that we're playing is pretty much has haste except for i think the grim initiate and the scorch bitters then after that is annex uh you know it's this there for a big attacker um but the thing is, if any of these creatures die that are 1-1s one that we're using for the cavalcade, cavalcade, we pretty much now get another 1-1 one, one token in the process. If they board wipe, we get another cavalcade. So we have ways to pretty much keep a threat on board at all times, no matter what our opponent is doing. Bonecrusher Giant, just another solid removal card, plus uh, creature, 4-3. It's not going to get the benefit of cavalcade, but it does enough to pretty much cause more pressure. So if they try to direct remove it, they can't. 4-3, pretty strong for 3. Uh... Chandra, this is another win con kind of in a way, you know, Planeswalker, you put a, you know, you can put a counter on it for zero, you can create two zero, you create two one one elemental tokens that can haste, sacrifice them to be your next end step, so pretty much this is another way to get more tokens on the board to then attack with Cavalcade to do more damage, and then you may also minus two, you can ta uh, target instant resources card in your converter may cost three or less from your graveyard, if you cast it, you can cast it again, so if you need to like play like a late at the stage a little bit later, you can always get it back and play up another late at the stage, worst case scenario, but really you're using it to pump out more one one token creatures to then attack your opponent's face, Legion War Boss, this is yet again another card, even even if it doesn't have ace, it has a one has mentor two. It also has at the beginning of your end cap, uh, beginning of your combat, you may create a one one goblin creature token. That token gains haste until in turn and text this combat if able. So pretty much you just have a token generated that's created one ones over and over and over and over again. Uh, then you have your life to stages, which is just another very strong um, draw card for your red deck. Reason for its spectacle cost, we can get it back with Chandra if we really really need to fill up our hand if we're really really light. And then Torbrand to pretty much take these 1-1s, one make your Cavalcade do 2 more damage per source that deals damage with it. And on top of it, whenever these creatures hit the opponent's face, they'll do 2 more damage on top. Council Embereth, we can play this after the Cavalcade goes off, give our creatures that additional plus 1 plus 0 damage. And then 18 Mountains, yet again, not a very expensive deck. The highest card in this one, because we don't play Embercleave, is going to be the Torbrand again. And pretty much this deck is also a very solid thing. It may be if you don't have the currency to then get the all the mythics that uh the other deck calls for but this one plays probably just i think it plays a couple more rares than the other deck because it plays the chandra and the legion war boss i mean it's only one copy and two copies but this is another style of deck it plays like a slightly different it's a little bit weak it's weaker in the sense that the creatures aren't as strong but if you get the right cards like the cavalcade you get a couple one ones out i mean you're pretty much if you attack for like a by turn three attacking with three creatures and you have a cavalcade out you're literally doing three damage initially and then you have these bonus damage creatures um on top of it i think if you have fervent champion you get the initial uh you get the cavalcade for the uh for each uh fervent champion that attacks and on top of it after that 
goes into effect, then you get each other fervent champ fervent champion or other knight creature. I think this is the only one. Maybe the grim. Maybe the no, it's a zombie warrior. Uh, but you can then plus plus one plus zero another fervent champion. And then you get the additional two each. It has first strike, which is which is very very good. But let's jump into the games. Let's uh, start off with the other deck and then we'll go into this deck towards the end. So enjoy. All right, so we're just doing some standard play mode. Uh, I would want to, I would do rank, but I'm kind of holding my rank. I don't want to really lose it. Plus I'm going to be coming out with a video that's going to be going on the deck that I'm going to be playing for my rank to kind of maybe hopefully get to platinum tier. I'm right now still in gold. I kind of ran into some bad luck this afternoon trying to get some rank up. So hopefully I can get to closer to gold rank and then make a video on the deck that I'm using to grind to that platinum rank. Um, so we'll just do some basic play mode. This is literally waiting a while. Okay, sweet. But yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens here. Um, one thing I always forget, I don't know about you guys, but I always seem to uh, never get put sleeves in any of my decks. I'm going to mulligan just because I don't have a turn one. This deck, this hand is much better. I can get rid of a land. That's no big deal. Or I can get rid of maybe one of these creatures. Maybe we'll get the Phoenix and put it underneath. But this hand is pretty solid. Our opponent's going first, so that is kind of unfortunate um but we're gonna go with this six card hand we have a turn one turn two they're playing white life gain i think uh i didn't mean to play that one uh this is what happens when i play too fast in my head they're playing playing white life gain or white in chance they looked at our scorch better i don't know why i mean okay they were playing white blue flash then would be my best guess. All right, they don't seem to have a response to any of this, unless it's an attacking thing. They don't, I don't know what they're playing. Maybe they're playing control. Uh, next turn we play the Annex. I think their hope is that they're going to Wrath of God, or uh, not Wrath of God, I always say Wrath of God, but uh, play, uh, Crap, I can't think of the theme, but pretty, pretty much play a board clear because that'd be their only hope. Unless they're thinking about playing an enchantment. Nope, they're not playing anything. Okay, we got our Ember Cleave. This is already looking pretty spicy. Uh, we're going to go into attack step first and initially attack. Two damage. And this is why this is so strong. I mean, I could add in that, but I don't think I want to yet. I just want to give them the threat of playing something. Um, And then we'll play Annex. Just in case they play um a board wipe we have a uh, token generator to replay tokens so we can still do damage to their face because I, I would assume that's their play here because if they don't they're in a pickle i wonder if they're also short on blue source because there's only one blue and maybe they're looking for a second blue source to play their cards but i'm not really sure what this blue white deck is their whole process because they legit only played lands and they haven't played a single card to give us an, any indication of what they're really really playing here all right i feel like they could have played that a turn later unless they drew it um we'll play the land we'll go into combat I mean, they have the quench. Okay, that's fine. I'll play the run runaway. Just add another one one on the board, at, just in case they have a board clear. Yet again, they're in a tough pickle because they're dead either way. So they have to board wipe or they're dead. But even with the board wipe, it doesn't save them because um, we'll still get one ones. I don't see them pulling this out in any way with four mana. I mean, they have a fifth mana, but it does not seem to be helpful. All right, they have five. That's perfectly fine. I think they still die. Um, if they don't, they still die. To be quite honest. I, the life gain I don't think will help them because they'll die now before they even block. They had to have played um, either their hand wrong or they just drew really, really terribly, but they didn't have anything that, I guess they only had the negate, which uh, which wasn't beneficial to them. So we'll move on to a second game. Um, and that literally took 
no more i think 30 seconds of that recording time literally was just us waiting for a game so overall that was a pretty smooth game i like i said i don't know what our opponent was sitting on it looks like they just played their hands slower than they should have i think they were trying to play their their pegasus and they just wanted to hold back their enchantment i feel like they should have played a turn you know turn two regardless if they had if they had it in their hand the whole time um, I mean, one of our weakest matchups would probably be something that that also can keep up with our rush. Uh, this hand's actually yet again very, very strong. I mean, we got a turn one, turn two, turn three. We got a spectacle. So I mean, we have cards that our opponent's going first, of course. That is perfectly fine. Uh, they're playing Boros, which is okay. Um, they may play the same cards we do, um, with maybe some slight adjustments. I always think that our opponent can see the chain come across the screen, just because. Um, I just see it and I'm like, oh, our opponent see, knows that we have a spectacle card. I mean, there's a part of me that kind of wants to see what they do. Okay, they're going to sit back. That's fine. Um, we'll play this. I don't know what they have for two. It, it, it's like weird, unless they don't have anything. They're waiting for a combat for something. Okay, I was not expecting that. It kind of caught me off guard, but that's perfectly fine. Looks like they're weirdly really playing slow. That's fine. It kind of slows down our plan a little bit, but not too, too much. Um, I guess we could play this. And then we play the Annex. So at least it's a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, we'll hold back. Turn Next turn we'll play the... I mean, next turn we could... So we're playing like a Boros like deck. I can see them attacking. That's fine. I'll take four. I'll take the free point of damage. They didn't draw a land, which is good for us. Um, we go into combat attack, first strike damage. Uh, we don't have regular damage. We'll play that. We'll play. We'll play. Uh, play that. Uh, which then we'll also play. I mean, I could do two damage to their face. I don't have enough to actually physically go out right and play it. Um, we'll play another one of these. I mean, this could be the make or break turn for them personally, because if they don't play anything, interesting. They're playing Boros enchantments of some sort. They're holding back because I feel like they know what we may have. Um, I mean, I could take two points of damage here. Um, if I attack with everything, um, it's fine. I think if I attack with everything, I think we're gonna wait and see what they do. Uh, I think it's dead. Um, but we'll take the two point of damage so our creatures and die in the process. Um, and we'll end turn. Um, he's got three. Alright, and there goes game. I mean, we played around his Bone Crusher. Um, you know, I think he wanted us to block into it. Uh, but overall, a very solid deck, as you can see there. Um, it was an aggro deck. I don't, yet again, I want to play one more. That only took, like, another couple minutes. I vote, something about them, I feel like every person we're playing is playing very, very slow. Like, in the sense that, like, I feel like they have cards in their hand, but they're playing just against decks that are slower. I would like to play against a deck maybe a little more aggressive. I mean, heck, I would love to play even against a deck that would, um... That would be a mirror match. I always like a good, solid mirror match. Alright, then we got Vangaru. Um, I mean, there's... 
the the person doesn't matter. Uh, hmm. I mean, we have Embercleaves and Torbrand, but uh, man, that's tough. You know, for the risk it, I mean, we're two and zero. I mean, why as well risk it? I mean, we don't get the first turn damage. We'll keep the seven. I mean, something something tells me I probably shouldn't have, just based on what I feel like our opponent's playing. I really need to go with sleeves. All right, so we're playing Boros again. Uh, we got a land, so we'll put the land into play. We'll play the Scorch Spitter. Very interesting we're playing against Boros. I wonder if there's a new archetype that people are playing with the Boros style. I mean, like we saw last game, someone was playing like enchantments, which I felt was slow, but I wonder if there's an interesting way to play Boros enchantments. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, this like red decks are fairly easy in the sense that you don't really have to think too, too much about what you're doing. I mean, in a way, I guess you got to think, but our opponents already roping us, I guess, as they're upset they're playing against a red deck. I don't really know. Or they went AFK. Sometimes it, sometimes it boggles my mind. Okay. They're playing against a life game deck. Okay. So we're gonna have to play around that, which is interesting. Uh, I guess we won't attack. Um, hopefully we draw a turn three because I would love to get some counters on this. All right, that's fine. If they attack for one, okay, they're not gonna attack. Interesting. Um, I actually think I'm gonna play this side. And no attacks. All right, they're playing fires. That's fine. It's like a fires deck, so they got Nightmare Shepherd and a dragon. Interesting. So this is where it gets tricky, you know. It's like I can play Torbran. All right, I can play Torbran. That gets a plus one, plus one counter. Uh, we'll attack here and here. Either, I think either way. Like, it's it's weird for them. In the sense that they're, whatever they block with will die. I could have also held back. I could have also attacked in with, like, Ember Cleave. Interesting block. I mean, next turn, if they get a land. They have to get a land because they can't play. Well, they can play the. See, then their scry lands really don't matter. They're looking for some. They're looking for an answer. I don't know if the dragon. I think they're going to give it haste. Oh, they give it plus one plus one. Interesting. This is an interesting combo deck, I would say. They play their two spells, so they're done. Okay, they got abilities. Nice. Um, I think we go in and attack. I, I just want to see what they're going to do. It's fine. I could be like weird, but I'm just gonna let this go. I'm gonna see what they do here. Cause now they have to like block with everything. Unless they have something to remove. Um, whenever an angel you control dies. Interesting. Another one. They can't really go all out and block. What I could do is I could see how they block on the next turn. 
and I could actually play a new Embercleave, which I think is the play. Embercleave costs four, so I can't technically castle and play Embercleave. They, I mean, the token's gonna help. I assume they're gonna block it down a 1-1. One, one. Um, do they, there's trample, dude. You have to block with two. I think they need to, they need to block with two. There you go. All right, so they really want to kill the, tor the, they really want this dead. That's the weird part. They really want this dead. Are they going to accept this? That's the question. Cause I, I, I don't think they know what we have in our hand. Uh, this is fine. In good game. Um, so yeah, I mean, our opponent, if we didn't have a second Ember Cleave, I think that could have been a different game, but, but I mean, we were thankful that we had a second Ember Cleave. We were able to get through it. That's yet again, the way Ember Cleave like synergizes in this deck, it's just so strong. Like it's like ridiculously strong. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's why it's why everyone hates, uh, everyone like dislikes red decks. But now we're going to move into the other red deck, the one that plays, it's a little more smaller creatures, plays the Cavalcades. Um, a good opening hand would be a couple of one ones, a Cavalcade, maybe something to dig a little deeper later. Um, I mean, that's the hope. Uh, but yet again, this is, this is why I would say like red decks are probably like one of those fairly simple decks that if you're new to magic and you just want to get like into games and get through games, play a red deck. I mean, I think I spent the last 15 minutes playing the one red deck and now we have the other version. Um, let me know what you guys think about like a good starter deck for uh, magic. Like, do you guys play red or are you guys all about like playing something else? I go first. I could draw in. Uh, I'm gonna keep. Part of me says I should have mulliganed. I mean, but I have drops. Um, I'll, I'll get that damage in one way or another. Okay. That's fair. I mean, let's see if they want to block into it. I mean, it's not a big deal. I mean, we got a decent hand here. Um, let's attack in and see what they do. I'm going to draw the card regardless, whether they block or not. It's fine. Play the Grim Initiate. Uh, we'll fill our hand up. Okay, so we have another Annex. We'll probably play these two cards next turn, just because they're solid. We get a Planes. It's perfectly fine. We'll get in for one more point of damage next turn. Oh, the the pain and torture of, you know, let's play the Annex. I think that's the play. Um, the wall will go, uh, the wall will get, we'll get through the wall um, next turn, definitely. I mean, I can see them banishing that's perfectly fine. I mean, that that doesn't bother us. The now the play could be. It's not going to make this do anything, but this will do more damage, and this will go up a lot of devotion. So I think we play as much as I want to go against this. But part of me is saying play Torbrin and attack and see what happens. I mean, none of my cards actually, uh, I mean, the only thing that would counteract is this is with this dies, but. I don't know why they didn't block and took the six. I guess they knew they were going to get two life. That's fine. All right, they're going to get one. Um, this is actually very, very solid for us. Uh, we can play this and this. And they concede. Um, just because I guess they realize what just happened. 
Um, I don't know why they didn't block our annex. I part of me said they would. I I feel like they should have, but I can see why maybe they they didn't. Um, we gotta get it. I think that, that that game took a couple minutes. Very strong. It doesn't. I don't know. Something about red is just this is it's just hit your opponent's face, hit your opponent's face, hit your opponent's face, hit your opponent's face. Like there's not like, you know, our opponent played stuff and we're like, okay, you know, we, we can get through this. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, both red decks have their differences. Um, I mean, I, you know, I, you, I guess we really, I don't know. That's a, this is a mulligan. Uh, this is better. Um, I think we'll actually get rid of probably the bone crusher. It's probably the weakest card here. Uh, three mana is fine. We can play every single card, so the Bone Crusher is probably the logical choice. I mean, granted, it'd be nice to have something to ping something off, but I think Legion War Boss is better. I feel good about drawing Cavalcade. The one thing I noticed that in red decks, you seem to just draw the cards you want, if that makes sense, if it doesn't seem that way sometimes. I don't know why our opponent's sitting here thinking. Um, I We haven't... I. I always thought it was the person who goes first decides if they want to mulligan or not, then it goes on to the next person. But I guess it's the other way around. I don't really know. They must be thinking really, really hard. Maybe they're going through like the things like, like am I playing red deck? Am I playing control? Am I playing mid range? Like, what is the, what is the deck we're playing overall? Um, still thinking. Maybe they're maybe they're roping us. I mean, it's not like they have a timeout. I mean, I'll I'll sit. I mean, I, at the current rate, I think we've already played through like four games, so we're at a record space. Uh, the other thing too is I may add timestamps in the comments just so that you guys have an idea So if you want to see one or the other just so you guys can click on them and kind of like know where each red deck is If you're more if you more if you want to see more of the other one than the other uh, Okay, keep six Wait what I mulliganed uh, uh, Oh, yeah, I mulliganed I completely forgot I mulliganed Wow um Oh yeah, because the first hand had Torbrands and stuff. That was a slow hand. Uh, okay, so see, it's one of those things. It's like it just knew that we wanted to. Uh... It knew we wanted to redraw. Uh, Bone Crusher. All right, it's fine. We're playing a uh, Esper Control or Esper or something. Esper, I don't know exactly. It's fine. They got their planes. The weird part is, is that uh, it always thinks that we have an ability to play. I think their goal is now to get to um, four, five. Five would be their time warp to stop us. Um, this is gonna be interesting. I kind, I'm kind of curious. Uh, we'll just attack in. Um, we'll mentor. I will mentor a token. Uh, that's fine. I mean, I could have also. I could have also wiped the board. I mean, there's a possibility that they may have a board wipe here. They got four. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Uh, that would have been good if we had that last turn. I uh, will play the annex. They really don't. I think they're going to really try to control our board here. Um, it's not a big deal. We didn't draw a cavalcade. Grand. They're going to play the 2-3 blocker. That's fine. Uh, that's not what we want. Um, combat. We'll attack here. We'll get rid of their 
Get rid of their Planeswalker. They're going to deal three damage to our creature. Gain three life. It's fine. We have a Bone Crusher, um, which is, I think, good. And we'll say go. I'm gonna create a zero, zero four. Doom foretold. They're playing the Casper controls, which in general is pretty much. Um, the person was just being a jerk, in there because you know he emoted. Of course, that's usually like he's like I got you on lock, so it's fine. Um, that's just a deck that we just got. You know, we got to a point in the game where we ran out of steam and they pretty much that we got into their game once they board wiped. Uh, it would have been a different story if we had the annex, uh, but it's not the biggest deal is we just kind of, you know, it's just one of those things uh, that, you know, get annoying, I guess. I, I mean, it is one of those things, too, where uh, the opponent, um, I guess there's like a, a way a person can play the game, I guess. Um, and I guess sometimes you get the opponents that, like, once they know they're going to lose, they're going to scoop. And they get the opponents that know when they have the advantage that they're just going to keep that. Um, this hand seems very interesting. I It'd be very, very slow, so I'm going to actually mulligan. Uh, this is much better. Um, we'll get rid of a Bone Crusher because every other card together is amazing with the Cavalcade. Bone Crusher is the only outlier. Um, I mean, there's a good chance we'll just draw the Bone Crusher. Uh, I mean... We can play like two cards and our opponent may just be like, I'm good. All right, we're playing blue. Playing blue something. Uh, we'll play this. Get that extra point of damage in. If our opponent's playing like a counter deck, you know, might as well get this on the board than a creature. Uh, turn three, we can definitely play a Chandra. Our opponent left mana open, so I think I'm actually gonna play this. Because as you can tell, it hung up. I mean, they may also have a burn spell. It also gets hauled up just because of this one little effect. It's like they have so much to do because they have so many cards. They took damage. Interesting. Uh, it's perfectly fine. I'd probably still attack regardless. Yeah, I think we'll still attack. Um, and our opponent scooped because they know that we'll do at least there's four damage on the board and that's just going to pretty much persist and their annex can only like slowly kill off and I could like sit there and I could just play certain cards um, we'll play one more uh, to see if we can get to the same record our other deck had because um, I think we're now one and one or two and one so see if we play four games I mean we haven't even gone like a half hour filming gameplay so might as well just keep on going. The wait times have been a little long, uh, with what you know, with what's going on. I, I'd, you'd figure more people are playing. I mean, it's, we're also close to the end of the season. We're already on the twenty third of March, um, and uh, you know, you got like what a week left worth of uh, grinding out ranked. Well, actually, we're playing play mode, so maybe everyone else is grinding out ranked. Um, I mean, each deck also has a sideboard. I mean, they're pretty relatively the same that you would see in a red deck where it's just a lot of like, okay, if our opponent's playing one way or the other way, we have kind of like things to play around it. That took 40 seconds, which is uh, very surprising. Uh, so I'm very, it's very interesting. We're, look, we're both like TV people. Uh, yeah, this hand's solid. Um, we have three, three drops and a one drop, but I think this is a lot, this is very, very good. Maybe we'll draw into our two drop. Uh, we'll play the one, we'll play the that and that. Maybe we'll play against a mirror. I'll be happy. I would love to see a red mirror match. No, we're playing like an Esper deck of some sort, which is okay. They like their top card. Um, I'll take a Tin Street uh, Dodger and get another point of damage in. Um, next turn we'll play, I think we'll play, it's fine. Hmm. Part of me wants to play the Legion War Boss and turn four play the the Annex. I think that's the play.
I mean, if we get a cavalcade here, that'd be like GG's for the most part. Okay, they got three. That's fine. They're going to kill this. And kill that. Yeah. Uh, we didn't draw land, so we, we're stuck here. But I mean, we play a fervent champion. I think Annex is the play, just in case they kill something. And it's at four, so that's a plus. And next turn, we can always play around that. Uh, they could also have uh, the Wrath card, which in this situation is good, but also bad for them. Okay, the Doom Foretold. Uh, sure. Um, I guess we'll get rid of that. And I'll get a 1-1. One, one. It has, doesn't have haste, but uh, play a Fervent Champion. Uh, we'll play the Tin Street Dodger. Uh, we'll also play this because they're tapped out. And we'll attack in. He's not dead, but he's not happy. He's got to sacrifice his permanent, which is fine. He's like analyzing each one of my creatures, which is weird. He's gonna kill something? That's fine, I get another 1-1. One, one. And scoops. And that's where we get a deck, or a hand where we kind of overwhelm our opponent, and by the time their combo is online, we have too much on board. They didn't have a board wipe. I guess maybe they're not playing blue, um, like the other Esper one, but overall, guys, I mean, that that is pretty much both versions of the red decks. Like I said, down in the comments, I'll probably leave a timestamp in each section so you guys have an idea if you want to see the red, the first one that plays a little bit more, like more bigger creatures. Yes, because more bigger makes sense. Bigger creatures, and then the other one's going to be more of this like one drop, one one. I mean, we really didn't have to play the Cavalcade too much, um, but let me know if you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to know when I post more videos like this, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.